Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about a new feature that's currently in preview um, and out in the latest version of Crest and that is the ability to place waves along a spline. I'm going to demonstrate what that means. I'm going to start by just creating an empty game object in the rough area where I'm going to add some waves which I want here in this case and I'm going to start by creating a spline object and the first thing I see is that it wants some spline points and I have a UI here for adding them. So I'm going to click that a couple of times and it's going to create these two points. I've got Gizmo set to 2D, not 3D, which helps quite a lot. Um, so that's a, a tip. Um, I'll add one more point somewhere over there. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to put them inside the terrain a bit like so and um, I don't know I think that's going to be enough for now and now I want to add a wave pack so I'm going to use the Gerstner wave sorry shape Gerstner script and that's this guy here and that is going to generate waves in this area so right now that's obviously a bit intense what I can do is change the wave spectrum on this script and I can head over and grab wave shoreline which is one that if you have a look at that it's got much less wave variance so the waves are more or less kind of aligned in one direction and only a few wavelengths I don't have all of them turned on so that's kind of what it looks like. And now I can see that it's kind of added this patch of waves that come in in this area. And that's sort of done the job that I was looking for in this case. There's quite interesting things we can do and we'll show another example of that uh, next. I'm now going to demonstrate another use case of the wave spline tech, which is to create waves around this iceberg that actually flow outwards um, to emulate wave reflections off this iceberg and this is using the submarine scene from Crest HDRP. So to start I'm going to you know start with an empty game object here and then I'm going to add a spline component like before, add a couple of points to get the ball rolling and uh, sorry I've got the wrong object here so now I want to create these points such that they track the edge or they de delimit the area of the iceberg. So let's move that into something like that. Let's add another one. I don't know here, I suppose. Um, add one more. And then I can show quickly that I'm actually going to select closed for this line. And that's actually going to connect the first and last point and make it a closed line. So I'll just shift this guy over to here and once again I'm now going to add the shape Gerstner script. So it's shape Gerstner, not shape Gerstner batched. The latter is a legacy version of the wave system. We have a new one called shape Gerstner. It's much more efficient and it supports this spline tech. So if I hit up that guy I see something a little bit odd at the beginning. The geometry looks degenerate and what I want to do is it hasn't got enough subdivisions to capture this very high curvature shape this small circle that I've created under the spline setting so I'm going to jack up the curvature here even that's a pretty sparse looking mesh so I want to go a bit further that's probably approaching a reasonable amount of geo for this shape and yeah I can see some pretty extreme things happening. What I want to do now is select a special spectrum that I've created called Waves Reflections and that looks something like this. So what do we have here? So the spectrum is just some small wavelengths here, um, 25 centimeters, half a meter, so just the small ones. And the first obvious issue is that the waves are traveling in the wrong direction. They're not rippling outwards, they're traveling inwards. But we can fix that with the wave direction heading angle. Um, so you can do really interesting effects here. 
for example, here I've got the waves actually traveling along the spine, so they're rotating around the iceberg, which is kind of fun. But I will just turn them 180 degrees so that they ripple outwards. And you can kind of see the right thing emerging at this point. Um, so the other thing is that's a huge area, obviously, for the reflections to be active on. Way too large. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the radius to something much smaller, like perhaps 10 meters. And to be honest, this is already getting the kind of effect that I wanted to demonstrate. There's a few more parameters that can be fine-tuned, like how much blending there is. Um, so I can give it a bit more of a softer fall off. It's kind of hard to see. I mean, if I set it something a bit larger, we're just losing that edge where the waves visibly stop. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, that's what I wanted to show. So I hope this is interesting and useful for you guys. Thank you.